Now, of course, probability comes after statistics. And basically, what you're supposed to do with statistics, well, let's see if I can do this. We had a good week last week, so with statistics, you're supposed to gather calculate hey um yeah Mr. McClure, uh yeah. we you haven't shared your uh oh sorry thing with us yet sorry i suck i'm gonna keep it all to myself there we go there you go Statistics were supposed to gather, calculate, and interpret. Data. Okay. Now that's one. Two, we're supposed to learn basic probability. Now, when you're in a statistics course, I hate when it does that. When you're in a statistics course, you add number one plus number two, and then you get basically a predicted outcome. Okay, because Basic probability deals with cards, coins, lottery, things like that. All right. And when you get to working for Michelin or Bosch or or accounting firm or whatever the case may be, you're not going to deal with these guys. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to take this guy and a little bit of what you learned in basic probability and you're going to put them together and then you're going to do a predicted outcome all right now the predicted outcome you get more of that in math 120 okay in math 103 it just cuts off with the basic probability okay so that's where we're heading if you're in 120 then when we get into chapter six and seven, after we do uh, a little bit of NPX and a little bit of calculator drills in chapters five and six, I think seven and eight is when we actually get into this right here. But 103, you just check off right here and then we move into business math. So, but that's, that's where you fall into the line of things. Now, what is probability? Well, I like to explain probability as, let's see, here's Highway 24. And you go out Highway 24, you pass the double bridges, there's a road that goes to Pendleton called Wild Hog Road. It's about 10 miles long. Make it up work. What? So now you're just making up words. Nope. Wild Hog Road. The actual state name is Highway 187. There's two Highway 187s. One is going to Pendleton, and the other one goes to basically Sadler's Creek. Okay, so there's two 187s. But most people that born and raised in Anderson know that Highway 187 is west of Anderson, and the one up north going to Pendleton is Wild Hog Road. <laughs> Okay, of course, if you're a transplant, you have no idea what Wild Hog Road is until now. So, yeah, just come on in whenever. That's fine. How was I hop? Was it good? So, the good thing, the bad thing is Pendleton High School. Okay. As soon as you turn onto Wild Hog Road, especially if you're if you've got an eight o'clock class. And you get on Wild Hog Road. You can get on Wild Hog Road about 7.15 
And if there's nobody on the road, you can get to Pendleton by 8 o'clock. It's only like a 15-minute drive, okay? But what happens is there's a little blue-haired old ladies club that works Highway 187, okay? And the little blue-haired ladies club, they, they make sure somebody gets in front of you that's going exactly 15 miles an hour, okay? And it makes that 15-minute trip last 30 minutes. Now, when you get behind one of these little blue-haired old ladies club and you get to the turn off, which is up here in Pendleton, that new subdivision at Millican Plants right here, the subdivision they're clearing off is right in here, the Bojangles is right over here, and there's a there's a there's a dead end right here. And there's a there's like a two lanes right here, you can turn left right here and right right here and there's a incoming lane coming like that but as soon as you get to Pendleton High School you got about a quarter of a mile between Pendleton High School and this intersection and right about here when you get right about here you're gonna say to yourself I bet that car is gonna turn left and just as soon as you say that what happens they turn on their left hand blinker now can you tell the future? Yes or no? No. no? no. Nobody can tell the future. Nobody. Okay? If anybody tells you they can tell the future, all you got to do is ask them one question. And what's that question? Give me the lottery numbers. Give me the winning lottery numbers for tomorrow night's drawing. And what will they say? That's a they question. Can't do it. They can't do it. They can't do it, or they'll give you some random numbers. Or they, yeah, or they'll say, well, my vibes are telling me. No, I don't want no dang vibes. I want you to give me the lottery numbers. You can tell the future. You can tell me what the numbers are. All right? Nobody can do that. Okay? So, but... We can use our experience in getting behind the little blue-haired ladies club. And how many times have you gotten behind that car? Every morning. Every, every time you're late, you get behind this car. Okay? Now, anybody telling you, anybody, anybody that's born and raised in Anderson and that is familiar with Wild Hog Road knows that it's the only road pretty much that connects West Anderson to Pendleton. So anybody that's on that road that's headed toward Pendleton, are they going to turn right and go to Sandy Springs or are they going to turn left to go to Pendleton? They're going to turn left to go to Pendleton because it's the only way to get to Pendleton from West Anderson, unless you take the interstate, which is like three miles up the road. Okay? It does cross the interstate right here at the Huddle House right there. Okay? The whole point is nine times out of ten if somebody is in this lane they're going to turn left when they get to the dead end nine times out of ten so you've got that going for you you've got the experience of being behind the SA driver and most of the time that SA driver is going to go exactly where you're going because you're in a what hurry. you're in a hurry you're in a rush okay so what did we do we used experience, we used observation, and we used a little bit of sense. And the sense was, I don't know how to spell sense. I always spell it wrong. S-E. Is it C-E or S-E? S-E. 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 Okay. Um, the, the experience is getting behind, getting behind the old lady. The observing or getting behind the old ladies club in the past, okay? The observation is actually, okay, I'm in a rush. I'm getting behind this old lady. This, this is like Squidward, whatever. In other words, it always happens to me, and it's not going to change today, all right? That's the observation. And then the sense is if anybody's on this road and they're in this lane, they're going to Pendleton, whether they work there or whether they 
or going to Clemson or whether they're going to Pendleton because there's two big schools up there, or not big schools, but one small school and one big school. So the whole point is you're using all three of these things to put a number on a prediction. Okay, that's what you're doing. Now, is this telling the future? No, but it's using these things right here to give you a tendency of what's going to happen. Okay. Now, I could do the same thing with cows. Or if you work on a farm, you got a holding pen right here. It's got a head gate. And the head gate's where you work the cows, give them wormer, dewormer, vaccinate them, whatever the case may be. But to get them in the holding pen, you got to have a smaller, smaller pasture. And then that pasture is connected to all the what? Big pastures. Okay? And this is where you feed the hay right here, and you feed the sweet feed and the stuff that they like, and ring the cow bell, and whenever they hear the cow bell, they'll come to this pasture. All right? But let's say that you've got some cows that are not used to the cow bell. Let's say you bought 10 or 15 cows and they're in this pasture. And there they are, right there. And this is about a 50 acre pasture. All right? And you have a gate right here that's wide open. And that gate is open to go to the holding pen right here. Okay? And you forget, you forget that there's a gate down here and it's only halfway open. Okay, there's it, and it's only halfway open. And you get on your ATV or your, your truck or whatever and you get behind the cows right here. Dang old Dodge. Dang old. <laughs> There's my smokestacks because I feel I feel insecure about myself. There we go. Okay, and you get behind the cows and they start to go forward. Which gate are they going to head toward? Ninety-nine percent of the time. The one that's open. The one that's open, right here. They're going to head here no matter what. And I've seen this over and over in my lifetime. And I can predict it without, with 100%. I can tell you where the cow is going to head based on which gate is open. There are two gates. One's all the way open. The other one's halfway open. How do they know it? I don't know. But I can tell you, when I'm in that truck, I'll tell my son, I said, you need to go down there and close that gate because that's where they're going to head. And when I start to get the cows up, they're already heading toward here, and he's right here closing the gate. They're already heading toward this gate. So I have taken my experience and no sense, because there's no sense. They're both the same distance. There's no sense. There's no sense like the uh, going to Pendleton. There's no sense, only that they know when I'm getting them up, they're going to end up getting in this head gate and getting a shot or something. But they don't know that because these are the new cows. They don't know that. That is what we're doing. We're basically, instead of me going, go down there and close this gate because that's where they're going, I'm going to say that there's a 90% chance that those cows are going to go down here. And that is what probability does. Okay? Now, probability is basically two different types of probability. That don't look right, but half the stuff don't look right when you write it on this board. Probability. That's, that don't look right. There's two types. The first type is what I like to call the Mayberry probability. Mayberry probability is also called the uh, 
theoretical probability. Theoretical. That don't look right either. That's not right. Theoretical is not spelled right, I don't think. That's an E. I don't think there's two. When you write on this whiteboard, everything looks wrong. Does that make sense? You ever write something down on a paper and you swear that the, the spelling is wrong, but it's right because it doesn't <laughs> look right? Well, that theoretical doesn't look right. But anyway, the theoretical probability, these two are just based on mathematics. Okay? B is what I call the physical probability. And the physical probability is based on observation. For instance, if I ask you what the probability of picking a king out of a ace of card out of a ace of cards out of a deck of cards is, you'll tell me it's four out of what? 52. Because you know that there's four kings and you know there's 52 cards. Now that's based on the mathematics. If you got a deck of cards in front of you, no. That's based on nothing but mathematics. But if you have a deck of cards, which I was going to bring a deck of cards, but I can't teleport a deck of cards to the Easley and Anderson Camp and Pendleton campus, so we're just going to go without, okay? Um, but if I had a deck of cards with me and I shuffled it 10 times and after each shuffle I pulled out a card and let's say that three times, which would be very high, three times out of the 10 times I pulled out a king. Well that would be very high and very unusual but that probability is 0.3 where this probability is one for one thirteenth, which is around point one. These guys do not equal. Why not? Well, they usually don't equal. The physical observation, the actual deck of cards, the actual uh, rolling the die, the actual placing the bet on the horses, that is physical. It's always going to be different from the theoretical probability unless you have what we call the law of large what? Numbers. Now the best way to explain large, large the law of large numbers is an is the article they put in the Triola book around the eighth edition. I think we're now on the 12th or 13th edition. That's the that's a good statistics book that we used to use, but as Tri County Tech does, if it ain't broke, you fix it. So you got so if you got a good book, you've got to get rid of it because it's a good book. So we got rid of it, but the article was about two MIT MIT students who took a roll of quarters, and they took each one of those quarters and they measured it, and they weighed it, and they did an infrared scan of that quarter. And basically, they took that whole roll of quarters, and they made one perfect quarter based on the numbers of all those quarters. In other words, they test the balance of each quarter, they, test, they micrometered, ugh, micrometered each quarter, they weighed it, they scanned it, they um, checked the balance of it, and all this stuff and they took all of that information and made one quarter in a computer program that was just about perfect from all of those quarters that basically they took an average of everything and put it in this one virtual quarter and they wrote this algorithm that flipped that quarter however many times you wanted to flip it and it would tell you the probability of it being heads or tails okay well we all know 
that the Mayberry probability of tails or heads is equal to 0.5, right? Or one half. Everybody agree with that? Because there's two sides of a quarter and it has a chance of falling on one of those sides. But when they did it 10 times, when they flipped it 10 times, they came out with 0.3 or they came out with 0.8, or they came out with 0.6. They never would come up with 0.5. So then they did it 100 times in the computer and 1,000 times in the computer. How many times do you think it took the computer to flip that coin to get 0.5 probability? Anybody want to take a guess? Close. 100,000. It took 100,000. I spelled, I did it wrong. Hold on. There we go. Took 100,000 virtual flips to get 0.5 probability. And it was like 0.4999995. 100 flips. 100,000 flips. Now, why is this important? Well, in order to you to get the matching probabilities and for no one to say that your your math is off, you need this probability to be equal to what? This probability right here, especially if you're dealing with statistics. All right. So let's give you an example. Let's say that you are a executive. You're the quality assurance executive of Michelin. Okay. And you're, you work in the Crystal Palace up there on 85. Y'all know where I'm talking about? On the left, right there past the, uh, yes, yeah, up there in Spartanburg, right past the uh, Carolina Dreaming exit. All right? Right there. There's a big... California Dreaming? What, what'd I say? Carolina, Carolina California. Yeah. It's a dang restaurant. I didn't care too much for it, but <laughs> it was right there, huh? Yeah, yeah it's Pelham, Pelham Road. Road. Yeah, is that yeah, still, Pelham. is that place still open? Oh, yeah. I never did Hello, like friendship. it. I never did like it. Now that fish place that used to be there used to be real good. My Joe's, he said it. It was. It used to have a pond, and they used to catch your own fish, but then they de heck quit that. But it was right over there on the left. But I think it's it's not in business anymore. Anyway, I never did like California Dreaming. I went there twice. I tried to give it a shot, but it's just like too. Prissy. Yeah, too prissy. I don't like prissy places, especially when half the people that go there owe money. So, you know, I just don't like it. We got a couple of places like that in Anderson. But anyway, I won't go into that. Um, on quality assurance, you work there and you make seven figures, okay? Six figures. You make a lot of money. You're an executive with Michelin. So you're in charge of probably the North American Michelin plants here in North America, maybe works at that. And let's say that there's eight or 10 plants in North America. I know there's two. I don't know if there's any other ones. But anyway, you make a lot of money. And your job is to predict what plants are going to make the, you know, the bad tires, how much percent of each plant is going to be in bad tires, meaning that the tire is not passable to go to the public. So you have to take it back and, and melt it down and start over, okay? Now, each year you have to present your numbers because they put your presentation's numbers. Here's this a PowerPoint presentation. And your numbers, they take those numbers and they put it in next year's what? Budget. Next year's budget. So if you say there's going to be $1 million worth of tires that's going to have to be recycled before they even hit the market, then they're going to put in a million and a half dollars to cover that. Okay, so you are this person and you say, okay, I need to go to the, I need to go to the, each of the plants and I need to pull a certain amount of tires so I can get this, this presentation ready for the meeting come July 31st, which is right before the physical year starts, okay? And it's, what's, what month is this, June? So you go to each plant and you're pretty much lazy 
So you tell each plant to pull 10 tires. Okay. Now your counterpart over in France that handles all the European, he's been with Michelin for 25 years and he knows his stuff. But he don't pull 10 tires, he pulls a thousand tires from each plant. Now he doesn't do anything to them, he just goes and he pulls them and he has the guys check it out and see if they pass inspection. I saw that, that was a yawn. Okay, I saw that. <laughs> now, but we understand you're deaf. Um, Damn. He pulls those thousand, and the lazy American pulls ten. Okay, they go through and they present, and they present here, and they present here. This guy predicts that they need to budget one point seven five million in for, for uh, recycled tires or bad tires that needs to, don't even see the light of day, doesn't even see a delivery truck. They get to the delivery truck, they get picked, they get sent back to be melted down and put in another tire. All right, 1.75 million. They put it in that budget, it comes out to be an actual 1 million so what did Michelin save? Seven. They saved three quarters of a million dollars. Okay? So this guy gets a bonus and he did a good job. Meanwhile, the lazy American pulled 10 tires from Sandy Springs, 10 tires from Anderson, 10 tires from wherever there's another, and he pulled 10 tires and he come up with, they need to budget one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for their you know where I'm going with this, aren't you? Okay. He says you only need to do hundred and fifty thousand because our Anderson our, our our plants in North America are really doing a bang up job. And they budget hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But what does the numbers come out to be? Two million dollars. So what is Michelin out? Michelin is out a lot of money. One million eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Does he get a check mark? No, he gets what? Why does he get fired? <laughs> he lost a lot of money. He lost a lot of money because he didn't what? He didn't pull enough he didn't pull enough evidence. He didn't pull enough. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. He was lazy. All right. Whenever you're dealing with probability and statistics, do you go with a little amount of surveys or do you go with a big amount? Big. Law of large numbers. You go with a big amount. Now, none of you will ever probably have to do surveys. You might. I don't know where you're going to be in the future because I can't tell the future. But I do know this. If you're ever given a task of presenting statistics to a higher up supervisor, you better not go with 10 samples. You better go with 100 or 1,000 samples. Because usually if you, this is called, <laughs> that's what that's called. And how many times, y'all grew up in South Carolina, how many times have you heard of that statement? And what does it usually end up happening? If you do something this, what happens? Do it something wrong. either right, do it again. you either have to do it again <laughs> or you get what? Fired. Okay? I'm a ten year old. He's a good worker. He drive he can run any piece of equipment on the farm. Okay? He drives better than most adults. But he has a tendency to do this. And I'm constantly on him about this. Because if you don't address this as a child, what are you going to grow up to do? Same thing. You're going to grow up to do this all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's why I try to stay on him about that. But anyway, what has this got to do with math? A whole lot. I try to explain to all my students before I do probability, Yes, probability is in Vegas. Probability is at the horse track. 
but that's not why you learn probability. You learn probability and statistics enough that when you are in a meeting or you are in a presentation, you don't sound like Billy Bob Redneck when you ask a question, all right? You understand why Todd or Buffy went out and got a thousand samples of bio whatever to substantiate the environmental influence of this on to this blah blah blah. That's why they pulled a thousand samples because 10 ain't gonna cut it. Okay? And then they do the statistics and then they come up with the probability that this chemical will kill most of the wildlife in the area because of this sample, whatever the case may be. Now, when you get into the sciences and you get into a lot of the environmental sciences, you're going to have to deal with stuff like this. When you get into accounting, you're going to have to deal with a lot of stuff like this. So it's kind of nice to walk into a meeting and to have some clue what's going on, and that's what this does. Now, what is probability? Now that I've given you examples of why it's used. Anytime you want the probability of something, it's going to be written like this. The probability of an event happening. Okay? Now, the probability of an event I put is P of E. Now, what is the probability of the event not happening? Well, that would be P of E with a line through it or an X through it. Now, some math teachers do this. Some math teachers do what the book says with a line over it. Okay? This is the probability of an event happening. This is the probability of an event not happening. Okay? These are complements of each other. The complement is what makes up the whole. Think of a marriage. Okay? There's two people. They're supposed to complement each other. It's usually the female that complements the male. Sorry, Zach, but that's just the way it is. Because the male doesn't very often complement the female. It's usually the other way around. Because the female is perfect and the male is not. You got that, Zach? Yeah, Make I got sure it. you remember that. Okay? You may not agree with it, but it doesn't matter what you agree with. You just need to know what is actual reality. Okay? Okay? I got so you. you don't see any of the women, you don't see any of them disagreeing with what I just said. See? No adversity. <laughs> okay? So you just remember that. Now, the complement is what makes up the whole. And I tell students this. When I was in junior high school, it cost 65 cents for lunch. Okay? And that wasn't no yucky, crappy Obama lunch. That was a good lunch. I mean, you had a hamburger, good cheeseburger, and you had fr French fries and you could get extra fries if you if you if you asked the ladies because they were nice to you. You could say instead of this, I want extra fries, and they would give you extra fries. And you could put all kind of salt and ketchup and just go back and get some extra grease and put on top of it. Yeah, and you know we we didn't turn out crazy and we didn't turn out stupid. Okay. Anyway, 65 cent for lunch, and I always remember my mom and dad used to give me a dollar, and that would give me 35 cent for ice cream. Because we had ice cream, we call them refrigeration units, and our and for the student body, we would sell ice cream. So for the student, whatever it's called, student president, and all that stuff. All right, this is the complement of 65 cent, and what makes up the dollar. All right, so you need to remember what a complement is. The complement is what makes up the whole. If there's 35 people. If there's 35 females in a classroom and there's 65 males in a classroom, they're complement of each other because there's 100 people in the classroom. All right? 
the complement of an event is the event what? Not happening. So remember what a complement is. That is a test question. It's also going to be applied in a lot of your uh, math questions as, you know, they'll ask you the probability of pulling a king out of a deck of cards is 0.25. What is the probability of not pulling a king? 0.75. You use the complement. Okay. Probability of a king. Probability of not a king. All right. That's the complement. The nation. They might ask you. There's 15 girls in a classroom of 50. How many boys are in a classroom? 35. 35, because it's a complement. Okay? So make sure you know how to use the complement. Okay? Question on that. Now, the main thing you need to also realize about probability is what? Read. The math is not difficult in this section, but some of you with reading comprehension problems like me, okay, probably seen me do that with some of these questions. I'll read half the question. I'm very bad about reading half the question. All right? Some of y'all suffer from that, okay? I don't know who does, but the main thing is with these questions, you have to read because they will leave something out. And it all depends on what your definition of is is. Who said that? Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> anyway, it all depends on what your definition of is is. They can put is in one of these questions, and they can put oh. and, and they can put or, and it's a totally different, totally different question. All right? So make sure when you're doing these problems, where did she go? Uh, she must have went to the restaurant. I must have offended her. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I like Bill Clinton myself. I liked him. I, I, I liked him as president. I, I don't say that to many people. His wife is evil and crazy. <laughs> I vote for her for dog catcher. But I liked Bill Clinton. I, I met him one time. Huh? I met him one time. Did you? Where? In Greenville. Oh, was that all right? Probably, he didn't ask you to be his intern, did he? No, he did not. Oh, good, good. I actually did, but the New York Times took a picture of the event, and I was in the picture with Bill Clinton, like, shaking his hand. It was on well, the you website. Well, you need to let us see that. You got yeah, your 15 too. minutes of fame. Uh, My 15 minutes it. of fame is I'm in Ron Rash's book. That's about the only 15 minutes of fame that I have. You're in whose book? Ron Rash. I don't know who that is. Yeah, you need dang old Google. He's dang old from Tri-County Tech. I'm Ron Rash. I'm a deputy in one. I, I, he was going to put me beating up a bunch of hippies, but he took it out. He said he might offend people. <laughs> Can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah, and and and, and in, in one episode, in one uh, book, it's called Serena. Uh, no, World Made Straight. A World Made Straight. I'm Hubert Toomey, and he made me a former Marine that wears a peace symbol. He just did that to <laughs> me off. He didn't tell me that until after the book came out. And Hubert Toomey's great-grandfather was a Confederate soldier named Hubert Shambly McClure. He did all kinds of stuff like that. He still does. And in Serena, I'm a mountain and a campground. Camp or Mount McClure. But that's my 15 <laughs> minutes of fame. Who else got 15 minutes of fame? Anybody? No. Nope. Okay, I can't find stuck. the article. I'll What'd you say? Find it. I can't find the article. I have to go home and find it. But Okay. Well, you'll have I to know, send it to me. I'd like to see yeah. it. Me and my me and my friends are in it, and I know he probably knows what what or the URL or something. I'd like to see it. I would. That'd be that'd be funny. Um, yeah, I'll, 
I'll find it. I'll send it to you. Okay. Yeah, Bill Clinton. He was a real good president. He just he just couldn't keep he just couldn't keep things where it was supposed to be. <laughs> but he's a whole lot better. He's ten times better than his evil wife. You ever seen that thing about <clears throat> about? about Hillary Clinton. We'll have to listen to it after. No, I don't want to see anything about her. Well, he says, don't you think that we won't soon forget that you let Air Force One fly off? And yeah. He's talking about, have you seen that? Yeah, I saw that. That was uh, popular before the election. I'm sorry, I'll vote for Barack Obama before I'll vote for Hillary Clinton. That woman's evil. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So, where are we at? Make sure you, I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. Oh, you, uh, Zach got me off on that. All right, make sure you read. <laughs> I could say, what is the probability of picking a king out of a deck of cards? And you would say four out of 52. But I could ask you, what about a face card? And then you would have to actually what? Think. Let's see, how many face cards are there in a deck of cards? There's three face cards. But there's four suits, so that's three times four is 12. So instead of four out of 52, it'd be what? 12 out of 52. See? You got to read the question. Here's one. What is the probability of rolling a seven on a single die? So what's the probability? You'd be surprised at how many people missed this question on the test. <laughs> It's, it's like critical thinking yeah. more than it is yeah, actual math. You actually have to think. And a lot <laughs> of the questions, here's another one. What is the probability of an even card in a deck of cards? You have to think. You have to think. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And some people say twelve. There's not a card in a deck of cards that has a 12 on it. <laughs> Ace is a, a odd or even. I mean, odd. It's usually a one. a 1 or an 11. Okay? But the face cards, what is a face card? Jet face one. card is a 10. So, a lot of you may write this as your evens, but guess what? You got to add these two. That's why when you're dealing with a lot of probability questions, you have to th 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 think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times four is what? Thirty-two. Thirty-two out of fifty-two is the probability of picking a even card. So. That didn't seem too hard, but you had to actually think before you did the problem. And later on in the section, we're going to discuss the difference between or and and. One little word can change the whole problem. If you don't read these questions, you might get them wrong because you don't read. Okay? Now, I'm just going to give you the basic I don't know what time, what, I don't know how much, okay, it's 9.25, okay. I'm just going to give you the basic introduction today, and that's what we're doing. I'm not going to get into the and and or. Just remember, the probability of any event is the number of times something desired over the number of times is tried. Now that's with an observation. Okay? What do you mean observation, Hubert? Well, mathematically, uh, you don't have tried. You don't have desired. Well, you have desired, but you don't have tried. Uh, and Mayberry probability can happen. Okay? number of times something can happen versus number of times something's tried. All right, so if I give you the even numbers on a die, well, there's three numbers on a die that's even out of how many numbers? 
six. Okay, that's the probability of an even number on a die. Okay, three out of six, two, four, six. Out of how many sides? How many sides are on a die? Six, Hubert. So that'd be three out of six, which is one half. Now, what if you flip the coin 50 times and 16 were tails? Then the probability of tails would be 16 out of what? What did I say? 35? Yeah, 50 times. I mean, 50 times. So the probability of not tails, which would be heads, would be what? 34 over 50. Complement. Now that's what this section is. I don't know. I have to look at the book. All right. I just want you to do introductory. Um, Introductory. It's a um, introductory probability. You'll see them in the book. Now, if you get to the word and or or, you need to stop. If it says anything about the additive law or the multiplicative law, stop. Okay, because we're going to go over that next class, which is when? Wednesday. What's today? Wednesday. Okay. Let me look right quick and see. If anybody's got an outline, you could tell me, but none of y'all have an outline because y'all suck. I do. Oh, you do? Okay, tell me tell me what it says out to the side of 7A and B and C. Fundamentals of probability, combining probabilities, and the law of large numbers. Okay, then y'all can do 7A in your homework, Okay. Now I need to tell you about what happened to your attendance. Uh. <laughs> these people are crazy, all right, these, these <laughs> bureaucrats. So I didn't fill out your attendance the last couple of times, okay, because I just fell behind, okay? I don't think it's a big deal. Oh, my God. If I don't turn in attendance by a certain date, they think that everybody is absent. You get that? If I don't turn in attendance by a certain day, they think that everybody is absent. And if I don't do it for two days, instead of thinking, okay, he must have missed it, they think everybody is absent for two days. And after two days, you're supposed to be what? Dropped. Dropped. So if I don't turn in attendance for two days, the whole class needs to drop. Did you get that? Mm. Like we're going like to drop a whole class. Exactly. So Tri County Tech, we're going to drop. A, Hubert's going to drop a whole class. So I just kind of ignored the emails, and I told you. I think I did. I tell y'all to ignore the emails. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just ignore them because they're stupid. They just the, those things are there to give somebody a job over in the library. That's what they're there for. <laughs> okay, just like bureaucracy. That's the way bureaucracy works. We think up something to do so we can pay somebody to do it. That's what bureaucracy is. Now, I've already taken the role today. I knew everybody was going to be here. Of course, they're not, but I just said everybody's <laughs> going to be here today because I didn't feel like fooling with it. Okay? Now, who's got questions? Did everybody do the test okay? When's the test due? Who's it already due? Tonight. tonight at it's due tonight, tonight at 11.59. Okay, so that means y'all haven't done it. You'll probably do it tonight about 9 o'clock. Not right. <laughs> no, I've done it. Yeah, okay. Did anybody, good. everybody do it okay? Nobody, nobody had any questions? All right. Well, y'all get out of here. Have a good day and work on 4.7.1. Yeah, I took it twice. 7A. Work on 7A. This is the only book. The sections are letters instead of numbers. <laughs> I take what I got the first. All right. See y'all Wednesday. Bye. Bye-bye.